Hello there once again and welcome to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And we welcome in two guests today we've not had on the show before. We have not, and I'm sorry about that. We should have. Uh, <laughs> but we're here to talk about just a wonderful, wonderfully effective organization that uh, treats the youngest and most innocent victims of abuse and neglect in Oklahoma County, the CARE Center. We're going to have uh, the executive director and the director of outreach, community outreach, join us and talk about what they do, how they do it. I have been there personally and uh, seen the uh, organization and seen the building and seen the rooms where they do it. They perform what has to be one of the hardest services anybody could ever be asked to perform, to interview and treat and deal with uh, children who have been uh, just very recently raped, abused and the like. And these folks uh, perform a wonderful service for the uh, community. David Hooten and John Minton are our guests today on The Verdict. We'll be right back. America has been here before, faced with dawning challenges. And we've always found the courage to lead. Foreign oil, greenhouse gases, we have the power to do something about them with American natural gas. Chesapeake is forging ahead, converting our fleets to clean burning natural gas vehicles, encouraging others to do the same. Welcome to America. Chesapeake, America's champion of natural gas. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. We are really pleased today to welcome to the set of The Verdict uh, two representatives from the Care Center here in Oklahoma City. On my right is David Hooten, who's the executive director of the Care Center. He, you may know him uh, for other reasons. He is a Grammy-nominated and Emmy-nominated performer, a soloist uh, trumpeter who has played uh, nationally and internationally all over the world. Uh, at Super Bowls at the Vatican and all around and has just a, a unbelievably internationally, uh, unbelievably good international reputation as a performer. But thankfully he has also uh, uh, taken on the project of being the executive director of the Care Center <coughs> where he has served for the last five years. He is also a co-creator of the Innocence Lost campaign which we will be asking him a little bit about. To my left is John Minton. John is a forensic interviewer and the community outreach director uh, for the Care Center. He also is a nationally and internationally recognized performer, a musician, a singer, and um, has been with the Care Center three years. Uh, with David, he helped to co-create the uh, Innocence Lost uh, campaign. And they're here to talk to us today about a very important uh, organization, the Care Center. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank it's you for having us. We're glad to have you. Now, David, let's jump in. What does the CARE Center stand for, the C-A-R-E? It Child Abuse Response and Evaluation. So CARE Center, Inc., um, acronym. And um, so we're the only CARE Center. There's different child advocacy centers in the state mm -hmm. that are called CARE Cottage or different things like I that. See. But we're the only CARE Center. Is this a private sector 501c3? Or how, it, how yes. Does, what's the relationship? It's a 501c3 nonprofit. And the funding comes from? Funding, we get some grants, and um, but believe it or not, the majority is private donations and corporate donations. So that's kind of my big job is constantly 
raising money. And you have a board of directors, I assume, oh, yes, that may we help do. you in that We regard? have a wonderful board of directors um, from um, David Box and Allison Carson, Kim Garrett, um, Greg Gross, Randy Lewis, Dan Martell, Jean McLaughlin, Karen Renfro, Becky Roten, Jennifer Sturr, uh, Tony Tyler. I mean, we have a wonderful board, and mm -hmm. they, um, they help us with a lot of that. Does the state, does the county, does, is there any funding coming from that mechanism? The, yes, there's a, a grant called uh, CAMA, and it, it's an, a, a large amount of money that comes in that helps all the child advocacy centers and the uh, multidisciplinary task force teams, mm -hmm. freestanding teams. And, um, and so that, that is a, a good chunk of it that helps us sustain what we do. It doesn't by any means you know, pay for everything. Um, we're, we're the largest in the state, the largest child advocacy center, and uh, we deal with um, up to, well this year we're looking at it, it'll be 1,200 cases, uh, 1,200 forensic interviews. That means that probably impacting about five to 6,000 people just going through the care center, which um, I, I know you've been to the, the care center, the main building, um, if we just have a second, the, our care center is a campus now. We have five buildings. Um, the main building is the care center, and then uh, we, on the other side of the street, we have the Oklahoma City Crimes Against Children unit. The entire unit is housed there on our campus. Um, no, did, that's Oklahoma City Police, Police Department. Yes, yeah. yes, the entire. Some of your folks, maybe. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and we love having them on our campus. They they do a great job. When we purchased that last building on the that side of the block that we didn't own, we renovated it just for the police department and it's uh, we have a very good relationship with them. Chief City does a great job and great unit. Um, then we have a DHS contingency in a, another house that it houses up to 11 DHS people. And then we have another house we call the Chesapeake House that is uh, for forensic interviewing. Um, and then we have another house which is our medical annex where we conduct medical exams for non-acute um, exams and also we have um, psychiatry, mental health, uh, people on staff that can see a child immediately after they've been forensically interviewed. So it's, um, they don't have to wait. There's, they just have to cross the street. So the whole concept is having all of this right there in one place where the entire team comes together, including the DA, the assistant ADAs come every Thursday and go through case review. So it saves the taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars by having everyone right there and getting it done quickly and efficiently. Mm -hmm. Let's talk just a minute and then I want to visit with John for a minute, but before we do that, what is the mission, the stated mission of the Care Center? The mission is to assist child abuse victims through investigation and intervention in a supportive and protective environment. That's, it took us 12 hours to come come up with that. We sat yeah. in a room and, and, and did that. Well, and, and the last thing you said, in a protective environment. Right. Now, that uh, has a number of meanings, I suspect, one of which is that you're a secure location. And yes. after hearing about this campus, some of our viewers may think, gosh, I'd like to go see the care center. That really is not appropriate or no. possible because of security concerns and the safety of the children and, and the way you do your business. So right. You're a secure location. Right. And, um, but when, when the child walks into the house, it looks like grandmother's house. There's toys everywhere. There's, <laughs> they get to play with toys. They can play basketball in the back. They're, we have a child uh, advocate that's with them at all times. And before they go to the interview, they're made to feel comfortable, safe, secure. And, um, and then the forensic interviewer would come down and John could talk more about that. Yeah, that's, that's really how I was wanting to segue into visiting with John a little bit. You are a forensic interviewer. That is part of my job, yes sir. Uh, well, uh, in, a, in layman's language, what does a forensic interviewer do? Well, my goal as a forensic interviewer is to provide uh, a neutral, fact-finding, and legally sound, child-friendly and developmentally um, appropriate interview. So I go in um, with, you know, with an unbiased opinion. We don't work for law enforcement. We do not work with uh, or for DHS. We're kind of the neutral entity that just gathers the information for that investigation. And so as an interviewer, within the investigation, my job is solely the interview. Well, any 
trained teacher will tell you that talking to children can be difficult. You have to talk perhaps a little, in some instances a little different than you might to an adult. Uh, what kind of training or experience or background did you have to <coughs> learn how to become a, a forensic interviewer? Well, at the Care Center, we see children two and a half all the way up to 17. So uh, an interview with a two-year-old is completely different than an interview with an older child, like you said. And so um, we have a very specialized training at the Care Center. We use uh, a protocol known as RATAC that was hmm. created by... Um, how, how do you say that? RATAC. RATAC. It's an acronym. It stands for Rapport, Anatomy Identification, Touch Inquiry, Abuse Scenario, and Closure. And so, um, it's a semi-structured protocol that allows us to follow the child, um, kind of follow their lead, and adjust mm -hmm. to their developmental and age-appropriate um, kind of questions. Talk about Corner House and Finding Words. Well, and Corner House is uh, a, a national training organization. They are also a child advocacy center located in Minneapolis. And so um, they host and travel around the country uh, providing forensic mm -hmm. interview training in this particular particular protocol. If there is such a thing as a normal day for you, in a normal day, how many uh, interviews would you conduct? Well, as you said, if there is, we don't have a normal day. Uh, you know, one day we may have uh, one child on the schedule and three emergencies come in. Another day we may have eight kids on the schedule. So uh, there are currently three interviewers at the care center. We rotate out um, and kind of jump in as needed um, and, you know, try and uh, pair appropriately with the children as well. Some, mm -hmm. some children are going to be more comfortable talking to me. Mm -hmm. uh, some may feel more comfortable talking to a female. Well, so, how do you gain their trust? Well, uh, the first part of that, um, protocol, the first R is rapport. And so the entire first part of the interview, and then we will continue rapport throughout. But we're going to uh, be assessing that child um, by talking to them about things that they feel comfortable talking about, things they enjoy doing, um, and very neutral topics. And so that's kind of how we'll do that. And you know, if they don't feel comfortable, we'll continue with that rapport. Where we, our goal is to make sure that child feels as safe and as comfortable as possible throughout this process, because it is a very sensitive process. John Minton and David Hooten are with the Care Center. We'll have more on the verdict right after this. This woman is having a heart attack, and she doesn't even know she's at risk. Heart attacks aren't always as dramatic as you see on TV. Gone unchecked, heart disease could crumple everything. A simple heart scan could save your life. Get a $50 heart scan at St. Anthony, the most trusted experts in cardiovascular care. The thing that has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator, and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda cobb Greetham. I'm a historian, and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible, and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless, and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth, to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits, you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic, and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. Every time our country imports energy, we're saying we've lost confidence in our own. But Oklahomans know under the land of the free lies the energy to be brave. Advanced technology has led to vast discoveries of oil and natural gas that have doubled America's supply estimates. Using one well to do the work of 10 and half the time, we're proving that America's best answers will always come from inside our borders. Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry, advancing our state, empowering our nation. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers. Today's show, we're talking about the Care Center with David Hooten and John Minton. John, you deal with uh, child, uh, child cases in, in, in a very vulnerable situation here when, when they've uh, potentially been abused. Take us through the process of when a child enters the door, what happens with the staff and with the, with the victim? 
Well, our goal at the Care Center is kind of twofold. One, to provide the forensic interviews that we were talking about, but also to lay the groundwork for that child and the family to be able to make a healthy recovery. So we're coming in at the beginning of an open investigation on child abuse. And as soon as they get there, uh, David, I think, was speaking to it earlier, they're going to be greeted uh, by our child advocate. And, um, you know, be made to feel comfortable. If they need a meal, we can provide a meal as well. Um, but again, we want it to be neutral and, um, and a friendly, inviting uh, place for the child to feel comfortable. Uh, we'll meet with the family as well if a family's involved or is present at the, at the care center. And then we'll meet together as a multidisciplinary team. So all of the investigative agencies that are involved, uh, they will be there and we will work together to make sure that we are providing the most comprehensive interview so we can minimize the number of times that this child has to go through this in a non-therapeutic setting mm -hmm. then we would provide uh, go on with the interview and then after that uh, bring the child back downstairs uh, the agencies would then meet with the family if, if need be and then as each family leaves um, the child will get a teddy bear uh, a blanket uh, school supplies stuff mm -hmm. like that any needs that they mm -hmm. may that may they may have who determines whether or not a child can enter the care, care center is, is it a police action is it a court what, what what determines well we only take or see children who are involved in an open investigation so there has to be um, an investigation either by law enforcement whether it's OCPD we have 17 jurisdictions here in Oklahoma County that we cover uh, the FBI OSBI, um, Indian Child Welfare, the Department of Human Services, DHS. So any of those investigative agencies uh, that may have an investigation mm -hmm. in child abuse are typically going to be bringing their children and to us. who would call you? Uh, the, a the agent themselves. The police officer? The, uh, well, the detective. The detective. Uh, the detective or the DHS investigator mm -hmm. um, that is in charge of that case. Okay. And your, office, your hours are 9 to 5, right? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and going back on something he was saying about when the child goes up to the forensic interview, there's behind the glass are, is a mental health professional, probably a DHS person, the detective. There's a whole staff watching the interview as it goes on, and they have an earpiece in their ear. so they can be spoken to from the people behind the glass. The forensic interviewer can be spoken to. Can be spoken to. So, um, and um, then when that, when it's over and the child hopefully leaves with their little pack, which is all they have at that point in time, that may be all they have to, you know, for where they're going. Um, there are times when the child has to be separated from the parents at that time. And that's one of those bad days that you, you know, they're, they're, the reason it's, uh, the center is set up the way it is is that that can take place hopefully calmly and in the best way possible. As far as hours, um, they can, there's, uh, we try to have normal hours, but we're kind of like a fire department in that your hours, you set up your schedule, but then at 3 o'clock in the morning, if the team gets called, the entire team comes in to, if it's a witness to a murder or, or, or uh, you know, there may be a number of reasons why they need to have the child or siblings interviewed right away. Um, and our entire team would come in and do the interview. And you can always, you know, you always tell because the next morning everyone's kind of looking at each other <laughs> blankly <laughs> stared because nobody slept. But um, no, it's, we don't keep regular hours and I try to be as, as uh, kind with them as possible. As, when we don't have something to do, even if it's in the middle of the afternoon, go home, go work out, do something else, because there's times when we, we really get hammered. We're so you're going to do the forensic interview first? Correct. And then if there's a medical need, would that be the next thing that would be addressed, and how would that happen? That would come into play on us on another day. Um, at the care center, we only do the non-acute medical exams, so uh, that would be something that we would schedule out. Um, if there is, um, if it's in, with, if it is within that 72-hour period, that that um, exam is going to take place over at Children's Hospital. But on a non-acute exam, that would take place on your campus. Correct. Right. And we would schedule that out. And, and who does that? We have a uh, we have a, someone from uh, OU Health Science Center from Children's Hospital that does comes to our campus and does the exams. And then uh, there's, there's some uh, uh, mental health folks available right. in case that, those services. Right, if, if they need um, to immediately speak with someone, um, first of all, our, our mental health professional is, is watching the interview. If there's, any, if there's certain trauma or suicidal tendencies or a number of different things why they need to be talked to right away, that would happen just by crossing the street and talking to our, mm -hmm. um, you know, psychiatrist. What is the caseload like? How many kids would enter your building needing care? Uh, well, it, it, it varies 
when when I first took the position, we were doing I think they were doing about 237 interviews a year. We're doing about 1,200 a year now. Um, we may do more than that. Uh, a lot of that is. I, I don't. I know child abuse. Child abuse increases when populations increase. That's just that's one basic thing. Uh, awareness is better, mm -hmm. but that also may be a reason why uh, it's done. But um, we're just we're our facility is used a lot. Mm -hmm. Like John was saying about the FBI, OSBI, um, Tinker, mm -hmm. they would do. We would let them do an interview in our, our in our um, mm -hmm. in our house. So is is the is the Caseload seasonal? Are there times of the year? Well, where it, seems it used to be, to be. It used to be. This year, it's been very different in that usually it slows down in the summer uh, a little bit. This summer didn't slow down. Um, the caseload stayed pretty steady, and then when kids go back to school, usually the, it spikes because mm -hmm. the school nurse or, or the teachers or somebody's being told uh, different things. And so for us, it didn't slow down this year, and mm -hmm. so. There was no slow time. Do you track the results of, of the case? In other words, of the 1,200 that might enter, how many would a crime actually be deemed to have been committed in the end? Would charges be filed? What percentage of the 1,200? Well, we don't have a specific percentage. Uh, you know, it can take up to two years before uh, mm -hmm. a child abuse case even goes to court, if it goes to court. Um, and at the Care Center, our job is not to determine uh, whether abuse has occurred or not. That's the detectives and the investigative agency's job. So, uh, yes, mm -hmm. to answer your question, yes, we do uh, track, you know, disclosures versus non-disclosures and stuff like that. And we do follow through because we are working together with the district attorney's mm -hmm. office. Um, I specifically don't know that number. We, we we also track all the cases through NCA track, which is a database that everything that goes through the care center is inputted in, and it we're, the kids are followed up with um, until hopefully until the case is over with. And but like you said, two years that we've had some that five years later, um, that's when the case is actually going um, to trial. And what's very important about it at the care center is everything is videotaped on DVD. Things change with a child, especially if an abuse has happened. Five years later, you see the child is very different, but you have that concrete evidence of what happened then, and it was recorded, and nobody can change that. That's the way it was right then. That's what the child said. And um, that helps, I think that helps with the prosecution and helps with the mm -hmm. entire situation. If our viewers want to help, in any different ways, what should they do? <clears throat> well, you can text SAFE, S-A-F-E, to 50555, and that gives a donation of $10, and you can do that three times, I think, a month if you want to, or you can go to carecenter-okc.org, and um, there's a number of ways of being a teddy bear buddy is a program where if uh, you want to donate $88 a month, um, you know, there's different ways that they can become involved in uh, clicking on our website. Our website is very interactive and it's a wonderful place to go look around. Well, we have a 30 second spot that yes. you all have produced and we want to close uh, this set of show with you. So let me thank you both for coming on the show. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Thanks this for what you is do. more information on the Care Center with uh, David Hooten starring in a TV commercial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, I'm trumpeter David B. Hooten. Today I want to talk about the Care Center. Sexual and physical abuse happens every day here in Oklahoma County. The Care Center provides a safe place for these innocent victims to be forensically interviewed, medically examined, and mentally evaluated. Last year, over 1,000 kids and approximately 3,500 family members were helped at the Care Center. You can get involved. Text SAFE to 50555 to give $10 to the Care Center. Please help. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa. 
where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. That's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Well, I'm so glad we did this show. I learned a lot about the Care Center, and these guys are doing great work. Well, and they gave us a bear yeah. to take along. Teddy Very bear. nice of them. Care they're, Center doing a, they're doing a wonderful, wonderful work at, a, at a, the most crucial time, sometimes, in, mm -hmm. in a child's life. Uh, they're there to help and to make it better, and uh, they're really devoted pub public servants. We have some information how you can help the Care Center. First of all, you can just get on your cell phone, and if you know how to send text messages, it's really easy to give them some money. You just uh, text SAFE, S-A-F-E, uh, to the number 50555, and I believe that's a $10 donation $10, if you do that. $10, do it three times a month. Okay, and then there's a website where they have more information on the Care Center. That address is carecenter-okc.org. That's carecenter-okc.org. We also have a website. It's theverdict.tv. We'd love for you to go on our website, tell us about a show that you'd like to see on an upcoming edition of The Verdict. And uh, just like uh, the fine folks that came here on the Care Center, you can uh, tell us uh, information that our viewers don't know, and I certainly learned a lot today. So I want to appreciate uh, David and John for coming on again. Yep. That's going to do it. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next week right here on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.